Now the latest on the Columbia shuttle investigation and to Terrence Smith. While investigators continued to probe for the cause of the Columbia disaster, newly released emails show a high level of concern among NASA engineers that the shuttle's problems could prove fatal. The series of email exchanges from the last days of Columbia's flight were released by NASA in response to media requests under the Freedom of Information Act. The email shows some engineers debating among themselves possible worst case and what if scenarios. One raised the possibility of potential damage to the shuttle's left wing upon re-entry. On January 31st, for example, the day before the accident, a flight controller at Johnson Space Center was worried that superheated air could get into the shuttle. Jeffrey Kling wrote, if there was hot plasma sneaking into the wheel wells, we would see increases in our landing gear temperatures and likely our tire pressures. Ultimately, our recommendation in that case is going to be to set up for a bailout, assuming the wing doesn't burn off before we can get the crew out. Another email said Superior should ask the Defense Department to photograph the shuttle's tile section during descent, a request that was first made and then withdrawn. Other emails from different engineers refer to the possibility of total crew loss and describe an environment within NASA where, quote, getting information is being treated like the plague. One of the most explicit emails came on January 28th when engineer Robert Doherty asked, any more activity today on the tile damage, or are people just relegated to crossing their fingers and hoping for the best? At a NASA budget hearing before the House Science Committee today, the agency's administrator, Sean O'Keefe, was asked whether the emails had been adequately screened at the highest levels. Based on what I can see, the vetting of all this information that occurred on orbit during the operational mission was handled by the individuals, they vetted those questions, satisfied themselves that there were solutions that could be found and determine if there was a safety of flight risk to be attendant to that and ascertain that there was not in their judgment. You know what, we're in a new place right now with this email and um, I think there are questions the public want answered and um, I can say just for myself that uh, supporting the, the NASA budget is going to depend on feeling absolutely sure that uh, we've gotten real answers to those questions. Absolutely. You know, there's no question. Uh, we really have to work through this and be responsive. We will be accountable. O'Keefe said if the investigation showed a systemic problem with NASA's chain of command and communication, the problem would be fixed. For more about the shuttle investigation, I'm joined by Congressman Anthony Weiner, Democrat of New York, a member of the House Science Committee that conducted today's hearing, and by Lori Garver, former Associate Administrator for Policy and Plans at NASA. She is currently Vice President of DFI International, an aerospace consulting firm in Washington. Welcome to you both. Lori Garver, these are painful to read, these emails. Uh, you've read a lot of them and dealt with this in the past. What did you learn from these emails? Well, there's no question in my mind that the people at NASA were doing all of this questioning because they absolutely care more about the health of this crew and the vehicle than any of us. The space community is tight. These people are like family, and it's a good thing that they were investigating and, and what they were. And because emails. they thought there was something wrong? Well, absolutely. When people g review video and see that there could be a problem, I think it's a positive measure that you had teams at different centers taking an active look at what could happen. Um, I think if there are any questions and the investigation uh, will undercover this, it's in our modeling that we didn't determine, in fact, that the problems were as severe as they ended up being. Congressman Weiner, what questions did these emails pose that you now want to get the answers to? Well, I think when the accident happened, all of us had the same image in our mind of the Challenger blowing up. And we immediately said, oh, it's the same thing all over again. But policymakers and folks at NASA were saying, well, let's hope this isn't the same type of systemic problems that we found in 1986. You know, you put a headline up on the, on the screen. I'm going to read another one. NASA officials unaware of pre-launch objection. Engineers strongly urged to get flight. That's from the Washington Post, February 20th, 1986. There's an eerie similarity in the problems that have uh, occurred in terms of information getting from the people on the ground, the nuts and bolts scientists, 
getting to the brass at the top. And what concerns me most is not so much that there was back and forth and that there were some people in the industry and in the, and in the, uh, the organization that had warned about these things. It's that those warnings never reached the top. Today, O'Keefe said, quite simply, I'm satisfied they were dealt with at an operational level. And my concern is that if you're the NASA administrator, you have nothing more important on your plate than that shuttle when it's up in orbit. And for these types of concerns, as urgent as they were going back and forth, not to reach a decision-making level is most troubling. Were you satisfied that they were dealt with at the proper level? Well, frankly, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave it to folks to decide why this, this accident happened. And I think we're going to get to the bottom of it. I'm very troubled that it seems like, once again, we're getting to the bottom of it, relying upon reporters via Freedom of Information Act request, mm -hmm. notifying the administrator, which he admitted to today. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine that if I was in charge as a layman, and he is not a scientist either, the moment that crash happens, I don't get my staff at the table and say, I want to see every piece of information that might have had some insight into this. Mm -hmm. And the idea that he was reading it in the paper with the rest of us just shows that we haven't learned the lessons. Lori Garber, there, there was one particular issue raised in these emails that I want to ask you about, it, the, the reference to the request to the U.S. Strategic Command to give close-up uh, pictures and surveillance of the, of the left wing, and, and that request was submitted and then withdrawn. Why? What's well, again, I really think NASA has been very clear that they did not believe that information would have helped them uh, make a determination that would have caused anything to change. The very big difference here versus Challenger was all those discussions before Challenger were whether to launch or not in those temperatures and whether the vehicle was safe. In this case, the vehicle was already in orbit, and there really wasn't, ultimately, as Ron Dittemore and others have said, uh, much we could have done anyway. Absolutely, what, we all still want to find out what happened right. uh, and make sure that, that NASA does not have the systemic problem that they had in the past. But I, I argue it is quite different than Challenger. What about early in the flight, however, when uh, it wasn't in its maximum orbit, when in theory, uh, could something have been done then? Had those pictures been taken uh, as described in the emails? Could they have learned enough and done something? In the future, NASA may be able to take more real-time data, but they did not look at that video and see things until after they were already in orbit. After all, that's eight minutes. And uh, really, to be able to calculate that you would have a loss of crew and vehicle and do something that has never been done, either a return to a launch site abort or a transatlantic abort, is not a call that that you're going to really make based on the data they had. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what troubles me is that I believe that 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 conclusion is what led them to not deal with this information fully. Their conclusion going in, maybe at the upper reaches, that mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do, so let's not ask too many questions, is not the way I want shuttle administrators or, 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 or staffers looking at it. Today, in USA Today, uh, O'Keefe was asked whether or not there was anything they can do. And he hearkened back to Apollo 13, where he said, well, you know, we didn't think we could get that one down either. The fact is, if you read the fine print of these emails going back and forth, it is some of the brightest minds in America trying mm -hmm. to think about a way to save them if they did have to do some kind of a ditch. Um, what is still mind-boggling to me is that in, despite all the problems that NASA had had in the past, they still seem to have no better way to get information to the top rung. So here we are, we're talking about whether to increase their budget, lessen their budget, and still we have the same exact problems in one important respect and that is decision makers at the top rung of the ladder are not getting information when it's bad news. Are they getting information when it's good news? Perhaps, if you remember, the early comments about this flight was how flawless it had been throughout. It turned out that that was anything but the truth. Is, is the congressman right? Is there a problem of communication between the engineers who know the most and the management people who have to make the ultimate decision. I don't think it's clear yet that that's what's going on here. We did have a situation where a Langley group, a different center in Virginia, was looking at information that they think might happen if there was heating to that wheel well. The Johnson Space Center people, because of their modeling, decided there was no heating to the wheel well. So there was no need to transfer that information. Again, too early to really speculate on a lot of this that may or may not become something that was really critical to the investigation. I think it looks like the focus may be somewhere else, which is, does NASA really know how to model this uh, as far as damage off of the insulation from the tank? Mm -hmm. That may not even be ultimately what happened to the shuttle, so it's, it's still probably too early to say. And yet these emails, Congressman, were, were haunting in the way they so accurately uh, yeah. predicted or discussed what did happen. 
What actually happened? Well, even they were haunting, even in the sequence that they said what to expect and at what altitude to expect it. Look, the Rogers Commission, when they looked at this stuff in 1986, you know, one of the things that they said is, is too much of these decisions are made in isolation. That was pre-email. You know, um, mm -hmm. we're going to find out what's going to happen. I just hope the way we find out about it is there truly is a sense at NASA that we're going to be the right up at the front of, of leading the charge to get this information out there. We're not going to wait for reporters to pull it out of us. We're not going to be defensive when congressmen ask about it. And we're going to end this mm -hmm. culture of isolation. If I was the NASA administrator after what happened in 1986, I'd have a complaint box on my desk. Mm -hmm. You have any problems, any concern, however remote it might be, I don't care if you're someone sweeping up the commissary. If you have a suggestion, we want to be able to hear about it. Never again should we hear a NASA administrator sit before Congress on the eve of something like this and say, you know what, I heard about this vigorous debate by reading it in the newspaper. That's gut-wrenching to someone who is so concerned about safety. Um, but we are going to find out what happened. I, I can do, say that with some certitude. Do you agree with that? Sure, and there is a suggestion box, of course. There. No, no, but I mean, do you agree? <laughs> <that>? <laughs> and it never made it in there, I'm sure. This is real-time engineering yeah. data people who care more about this than anyone trying to do the right thing and I think the free exchange uh, was positive we'll find out if it should have gone higher up the chain and you do believe that we'll come to a, a firm conclusion as to what caused this I do I think the Commission is already saying some things that they're finding uh, that they believe they'll pinpoint uh, what happened okay Congressman Weiner Lori Garver thank you both very much thank you thank you